As a photographer working in conservation, my job is to photograph and film some of the most endangered birds on Earth. But I never knew it would lead me to a place like this. Okay. But I had to come here to tell the story of the endangered greater agitant stork, a bird known locally as Hargila. Do you think all the birds will be over there? Or do you think some will be here? <laughs> I don't know. We are not sure where they're gonna put the garbage. As few as 1,200 of these birds remain on Earth. And this is their last stronghold. And if it weren't for the commitment of one person, these birds might not be here at all. There is a stork. See from there. Oh, there is a stork there. One from the front, yeah. There is a yeah. only one. Yeah. My research led me to Dr. Purnima Devi Barman, a biologist in Assam studying the world's largest remaining population of greater adjutants. Every time I come here, I'm, I get so excited. Every time. On the outskirts of the city of Guwahati, she took me to a nesting colony high in the trees above a local village called Dadara. You can see the tree nest. Last month, we, it had five nests in this, in this tree. Two nests fall down, uh, you know, and the, these are the active nests now. You can see a big net under the tree, so that the baby birds reduce their injury when they fall down on the nest. You can listen to the bill clattering now. Talk, talk, talk like this. In breeding season, they have lots of sounds. I love this area a lot because lots of birds found here. I came with the idea that shooting the first high quality images of the greater adjutant would bring more international attention to these birds and to Purnima's work. She offered to be my guide to the storks and the community, and I'd work to film and photograph as much of the bird's life as I could. It's impossible to appreciate the storks on the ground so our first challenge was to film a nest 100 feet up in the tree canopy. Before the breeding season began, Purnima arranged for the construction of a bamboo tower that would put me close to the canopy of a nesting tree. It was critical that I be in the right position to capture intimate moments in the family lives of these birds never filmed before. I couldn't wait to get to the top and see the birds up close for the first time. Top floor.
Directly above people's homes, the scene looks prehistoric. The tree canopy enshrouded in fog, and five nests coming to life. Each with hungry chicks, and a parent that has guarded them through the long, cool night. When the sun rises and illuminates them, they're both beautiful and bizarre. At close range, the one and a half meter tall adults are imposing. Long-legged with a massive beak, bare skin vibrantly colored in red, orange, and yellow, and a dangling inflatable air pouch used in courtship displays. Their intense blue eyes appear knowing. They feel like more than a bird. The storks are protective around their nests, especially when confronting neighbors that are trying to steal sticks. Skirmishing with neighbors is a part of life for Hargila, but conflict with human neighbors is more complicated and has contributed to drastic population declines across their historic range. Working for Hargila is a very challenging job because Hargila builds nests in the privately owned areas. So everything depends on the willingness and support of the tree owners. And the people always, you know, they consider the bird as a very messy bird, unhygienic bird. And because of the smelliness, they just cut down the trees to get rid of the bird. One day, 10 years back, I came to Dadara. I found a tree owner cutting down a tree. The birds were nesting on the tree. When he was cutting down the tree, all the birds fell down. Nine baby birds. I didn't know what to do at that time, but I felt deeply pain. And I asked the person, I, I dared to speak to the person, why are you doing so? Hargila, they are an endangered species and we have the largest colony in the entire world. And he was very reactive. He and all of his neighbors insult me, started teasing me as an agent of Hargilas. That day, I felt very bad. When I came back home, I thought what I am going to do with my PhD. Even I couldn't motivate one person. I wanted to save Hargila from extinction, to save their habitat, to educate people. And from that day, my mission started. Each morning that I filmed the nests, I waited in great anticipation for the moment when dozens of Hargila parents would arrive to feed their chicks. Hargila are soaring birds and rely on warm rising air thermals that build in late morning to lift their broad two and a half meter wingspan high into the sky so they can travel long distances. Like clockwork, they arrive from feeding grounds around 10.30 and parachute down to their nests.
When the adults reunite, they greet each other with a series of vocalizations and postures, and often copulation. And then they get on to the business of feeding their ravenous chicks. Throughout the day, the adults clean and refurbish their nests. It's surprising to see a bird that people associate with being dirty take such great care cleaning each day. Even the chicks participated. The storks also collect new vegetation from surrounding trees and add it to the structure. Some are better at housekeeping than others. After several weeks in the tower, it was difficult to leave the birds that had become more and more fascinating as the days went on. But I felt confident I had captured intimate moments in the storks' lives. Their care for their growing chicks, the commitment to protect them, their playfulness and personalities, and their sanctuary in the canopy of Dodderus trees. But following their story would require filming in the place where most of these birds were getting their food. This is the Guahati dump, and it's home for most of the year to at least half of the world's population of greater adjutant stork. The storks fly here, 10 kilometers from the nesting colony, to scavenge the city's waste. Historically, these birds would have spent their time feeding in wetlands or scavenging carcasses across the countryside. But human activities have reduced those opportunities, so they frequently feed here, side by side, with people struggling to survive. It's obviously not a healthy place to be. Oh, it's pretty intense. To gather recyclables, they endure temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the smell and dust and smoke and exposure to the health hazards of wet, rotting garbage. It's overwhelming to see people in these conditions, especially the children, and hard to care that I can't get anywhere near the storks. So this is about as close as uh, we've ever been to the storks 
even though they'll let the people that are working here get within arm's length of them, it's incredible that they, there's some sort of individual recognition. Our taxi driver and some of our other helpers that have come with us, the storks are also afraid of them. We tried coming at dawn and setting up a blind, but the birds didn't cooperate. They congregated in a different part of the dump, and I couldn't move. A new strategy was needed. It was critical to show the conditions the greater adjutant faces here to underscore Pernima's work safeguarding their nesting colony in Dadara. When I started my work, I was not clear what to do. But I think women can make a big difference in conservation. So I started building their support. I started inviting women to cooking competitions. Then I built friendship with them and I started telling them about the Hargila conservation, why Hargila is important. I did the habitat here, the tree and this one, the birds. It is nice. I tried to bring the bird into their tradition, into their cultures. Women of these villages, they have a skill of weaving. Whenever I got some grants or donors, then we arranged lots of looms and yarns for them. And then we gave them training so that they can weave the bard into their traditional clothes. I formed a group, Hargila Army, an all-women group. All are basically the homemakers. Hargila Army means protector of trees protector of birds. And this way I motivated all the women here. The Hapalu Amita Managote Himan Guru to Babe Kwana Silvero, it a Guru to Babe Nababisilu, it a Abnizitia Pora, I say. Tarbai, the Karota Penetil Tarpa, Amar, a Lendu Lagi Lagi Damana, on some hand got I will get Laro. now, whenever there is a bird fall, people call us to rescue. I'm so happy to see them. They are going so well. And many thanks to the doctors. Communities have taken this bird as their own. The more time I spent with Purnima, the more I marveled at her energy and commitment to build support for Hargila conservation. From the local villagers to the governor of Assam and everyone in between. To illustrate the lengths to which adjutants have been pushed to survive, I had to show the lives of individual birds at the dump. I had to get closer. We came up with the idea to turn a motorized tuk-tuk into a blind to follow the birds. This is the Vehicles and cows were constantly getting in the way. The dust and smell from trucks and garbage was at times overwhelming. And the birds kept moving. 
But over several weeks, the strategy paid off. And a picture of the bird's life here finally emerged. The stork's day begins in a wetland next to the dump, where they've roosted safely through the night. People begin arriving from the surrounding community. And the storks begin making their way to the trash piles to wait for fresh garbage to arrive. When it does, they boldly make their way down to join people digging for the rubbish. The storks seek out the remains of butchered livestock and poultry, while people dig for recyclables. It exposes them all to insecticides, medical and industrial waste, heavy machinery. And though the storks are noticeably discerning in what they eat, I saw them consuming plastics when there was food inside. This pressure of population and humanity is not only push this bird to the brink, but also pushing people to the brink. It's an incredibly powerful image of nature and wildlife and people, and how what we're doing to the earth is not only destroying biodiversity, but it's affecting people in horrible ways as well. It's a difficult place to be optimistic, but if my time with Purnima showed me anything, it's that one person can make a profound difference. when Purnima started her work more than a decade ago, there were 28 Hargila nests in Dadara. Today, there are more than 200. In my final days in Assam, an international conference of women in conservation descended on Dadara 
to celebrate and learn from Pranima's success. I think this story should go to everyone. How the local people, how they are saving a bird. I contribute to conservation with a camera and came to Assam with a single-minded focus to record the life of an obscure, endangered stork. But conservation is about people, and the work Purnima does is the most challenging and the most important. She is changing the way people see their world. I feel so lucky. I get so passionate about the bars. Till my last breath, I'm committed to work with communities to save this bird from extinction. <laughs>